Okay. So uh, Jenny Bates from Friends of the Earth is, uh, is a new campaigner. You must have been with Friends of the Earth for uh, 10 years or more. Nearly. <laughs> um, you'll get to talk about uh, London Air, the politics and the vision. Thank you, Jenny. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, so um, I haven't got a PowerPoint, but I'm going to refer to um, Ian's uh, map at some point, and there's a map at the back I can point things out later to people. Um, uh, basically, uh, I cover London for Friends of the Earth, so that's all issues. So I'm not an expert on this. I refer to to greatly uh, people like Alan and Simon and also Kings for my um, technical support. Um, but um, I'm, a, I'm a campaigner, as, as Andrew said, I've been um, on staff since 2003. I came from running the Friends of the Earth local group in Greenwich and Lewisham um, for 10 years before that. Um, so we have local groups across London. Um, we have some people from Newham here. Um, and um, most of the boroughs have Friends of the Earth local groups, about 20-something groups uh, for the 33 boroughs, local authorities. Um, and we have other activists acro across the, the, the capital who belong to LIS and I've put a, a sheet at the back if anybody else wants to sign up to get an activist uh, newsletter, that would be great. Um, so uh, what I do in London is, as I say, I cover all issues. I cover rolling out our national campaigns, but I also cover London policy, trying to keep track of what Boreas and the Assembly are up to, um, and I try and make the case that um, being just me uh, compared to my friends who, who run Friends of the Earth Wales or Friends of the Earth Cymru, we have quite a few of them, but it's not that dissimilar in what I have to try and keep a, keep a track of. Um, and I also run campaigns in London, and two of the big things that I've done in London, in fact the thing I started with was a campaign against um, new river crossings for vehicles in East London, and that's a campaign that I'm continuing now with Boris, um, and also some work on City Airport. Um, I didn't run that campaign, but I've tried to, to, to work um, with campaigners doing that, and also the, the Friends of the Earth Newham group again. Um, you know, a lot of things concentrated in East London, and that's no coincidence because it is downhill, downwind, downstream. Um, and also air pollution. I've, you know, realised that this is absolutely key for London, which is, you know, it's really great that this is a, a, something that's coming together now starting to, to get traction um, and I'm now trying to get my other colleagues around the rest of the country interested in realising that they need to get onto this and especially big cities like Manchester, um, uh, Birmingham etc. Um, and I'm going to be doing a session with Simon at our National Friends of the Earth conference which is actually going to be held here in London and it's going to be open to members of the public for the first time on the Saturday part of it. So that's really exciting. Um, so there's a blog at the back about um, uh, our views about um, air pollution and particularly why we joined the Healthy Air campaign, which is the coming together of uh, several NGOs working on this issue and which was being organised by Health, um, Environmental Protection UK, which fantastically client Earth have now picked up and taken. So we're partners on that and that's the first time Friends of the Earth has got back involved with air pollution for a while. Um, so very proud to be to be part of that and, and, and working on that. Um, so I won't go back over the the situation, you know, except to say that um, you know in London, uh, London was basically the the only place that was failing on the particulates in terms of breaches. Um, uh, but the reality is that the World Health Organization limits are actually twice as stringent as the EU um, limits. So, in fact, you know, it's not as simple as that. Plus, in, in, in fact, the WHO say there are no safe limits for particulates. Um, and on NO2, we clearly are breaching. Um, we're the worst, as been said. Um, uh, and uh, as also been said, um, we are one of the 16 for which the, the government didn't even bother to put in a time extension, uh, expecting not to meet limits till 2025. Um, and, and obviously for London, obviously Olympics is a key issue. Um, we signed up, uh, I think Alan said, to, to, to meet um, EU legal limits um, for, for hosting the Games, and that hasn't been the case. Um, and as Simon has been working on, the, the Olympic route network 
the traffic displaced from those um, lanes um, into other nearby streets um, is expected to result in additional new breaches um, uh, of EU limits, which would be illegal, and the mitigation um, doesn't seem to have been sorted out um, yet, but we'll see. Um, so, on the health side, just London specific, I can't remember if it's been mentioned, but the, the figure is for London alone, it's 4, 000, over 4,000 people dying prematurely every year due to the long-term exposure. Um, and, and for Friends of the Earth, it's a particular concern is that um, air pollution disproportionately affects some of the poorest and the most vulnerable in our society. So we've heard about, uh, very clearly from Ian, the, the, the young and the old at, the, at either end of the, the age spectrum who are particularly suffering, um, tend to suffer, um, but also it's the poorest because they tend to live near the main roads where air pollution is worse. And that is something that is it, accepted by the mayor and by TfL. So it's a, it is an absolute justice. It's an environmental justice issue for that reason. Um, so another interesting aspect for Friends of the Earth is that there are very strong links with climate change. Um, it, it, there was a report from the UN which showed um, just how much um, uh, benefit could be, could be um, derived from tackling air pollution um, in terms of global average temperatures. Uh, so not only does air pollution contribute to, to the climate problem, it's all to do with sort of, well, various ways, but black carbon and soot and reflecting light and not reflecting light, but if we tackle air pollution, we may be able to actually adjust global temperatures by what could be a really crucial half a degree. And, and that is really important. And that's something, again, I'm trying to emphasise to some of my colleagues in the office. Um, so, obviously, we've got to sort this out. Not only would it be good for health, but I think we can make very strong arguments here in London and other cities about quality of life. Quality of life is a phrase Boris uses. We have to try and use that. And I think it's clear that it would obviously really make a huge difference to residents. I think we need to make the argument about how it's important to visitors and that sort of links with the Olympic thing, but also to business. Um, business actually doesn't like uh, poor air pollution. Um, I've got several documents at the back there um, that you're free to take, and I, there are a couple of copies of this one I'm just going to refer to. Uh, which is, this is a, something from the, the Mayor's Economic Development Strategy. Um, and it's a table saying the attractiveness of London to business. And London does really well in, on lots of measures, like number one in, you know, for several years running. But on, on a key one, freedom from pollution, London does really badly. It's like 2029 20, um, as opposed to, um, you know, from, from against other cities as opposed to being anywhere near the top. So business doesn't like pollution and I think we have to we have to you know their workforce for the quality of life for, 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 for those people living here. So I think that's a really strong argument. And because it's also traffic related, um, if we reduce congestion, that's another aspect that business doesn't like. Business doesn't like congestion either. So if we can tackle traffic and congestion, we're we're helping business in, in two ways there. And I think that's quite important. Um, so, uh, as we've heard, um, clearly, you know, the problem is too much dirty traffic. And that's a bit of a sort of euphemism encompassing two things. It's too much dirty traffic, so we need to clean up our vehicles, uh, which is happening, but it's not enough. We've also got too much traffic, um, so we actually need to cut traffic levels. Um, and Ian's colleague, Frank Kelly, gave a speech at the, or was speaking at the Environmental Audit Committee, I think the previous one to this latest hearing, um, and it was reported that he said that traffic levels needed to be cut in London by, and I think it was 20 or 30 percent. So that's the sort of level, you know, in order to meet the EU legal limits. So, you know, that's something that Boris 
hasn't got on his radar at all. In fact, you know, the opposite, as I'm going to come on to. So, you know, there are, there are many ways in which you can, you can cut traffic. Uh, but, you know, I always think about it as starting from the top. And, and that means reducing the need to travel. And that doesn't mean stopping people traveling. It means reducing the need for people to have to travel unnecessarily to get to, to amenities or jobs or places they want to when they actually would rather not have to do that, that sort of traveling. Um, and that, so it is, a, it's, a, it's a planning issue. It's a sort of something that, that needs to be addressed through the mayor's overarching plan for London, the London plan. Um, but, you know, people like to be able to get to, to shops and amenities easily. So, you know, again, that helps quality of life. So, um, you need to make sure that those things are, are within a, an easy walking distance, an easy cycling distance. So, we need to make walking and cycling safer and easier. Um, and then, for the slightly longer journeys, we need to improve public transport. Um, and that has to be... You know, the key thing can be affordability. Um, how many people are put off because of because of the cost, as well as the safety, the reliability, um, all of those things that affect whether people feel happy about taking public transport. Um, and and we do things like um, car clubs as well. So instead of providing parking space, you have you know people can have you know, it's real real evidence that if you cut um, if you if you provide car clubs and you, car club users, you know, journeys drastically go down um, and, uh, you know, even if people are doing what they, 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 they actually want to do, it really does have a benefit. So we can, we can, you know, help encourage that and get councils to spend money on all these sort of smarter choices, measures that we, that we talk about. Um, but another key thing is not to make it worse. I mean, it sounds obvious, but you just don't want to add to the problem. We're so far off meeting the, the NO2 limits, and we're, you know, we're not at all safe about the, the, the PM10, and even then, as I said, we need to cut it further, that we just, you know, we just can't afford to make it worse, especially in times of austerity. You want every pound to, in, to be invested in things that actually are win-win-win. So you want things to work environmentally, you want them to work socially, and you want them to work economically. You don't, you don't do things which only supposedly help uh, the economy or, quote, regenerate when they work the other way, socially or environmentally. It has to be um, not a trading off, but something where you, know, you only do the things that, that, that do all those things together. Um, and that sadly has been, you know, a problem that hasn't always been understood and from both sides of the, the main political parties often, you know, it's a desperation for, for uh, improvement in, uh, you know, supposed job numbers and regeneration has led to any, any sort of investment being seen as good when actually it can deteriorate rather than improve, it can degenerate rather than regenerate. So, um, just the example that I'm particularly um, familiar with, which is the, the river crossings in East London for vehicles. Um, sadly, Ken thought that this was a good idea to build a six-lane road across the Thames, um, two lanes reserved for uh, public transport with separate walking and cycling. But even so, it was going to mean 94% um, uh, uh, of the benefits would have gone to road users and only six to public transport, and, and this was an area where only um, between um, a quarter and a third of people had cars. In other words, two thirds to three quarters didn't have a car. So who was benefiting and who was going to pay? Um, and the worst thing was that it was going to take air pollution over an EU limit when that wouldn't have been the case without. And that should have been enough of a reason to say no way. Um, Luckily, we did get a public inquiry, and the inspector said um, he, he thought that that was unacceptable, that it, air pollution was already bad, that it should be made worse. And uh, Gillian was particularly helpful in working with me through Friends of the Earth New, and we outreached some, some people, including people that <laughs> kids were uh, at a school where this huge lane uh, road would have, would have passed. So um, hopefully we spared one school <laughs> that. 
Um, so, Boris, amazingly, um, partly because some people sort of on the south side of the river realised it was bad and objected, um, pledged to, to scrap that, which he did, but he's um, actually <laughs> made it even worse because not only has he now gone back to proposing a ferry for vehicles at that location, um, which would be a, that sort of road bridge by the back door, because as soon as you do that, traffic queues would build up waiting for the ferry and then they'd say, oh, well, let's just put the last little bit across the river. But he's also proposing um, something that was Ken's number two, so they've just swapped which they thought was more important, um, and that is a, a crossing at the Blackpool Tunnel, which is, I think Ian probably explained, this is the Greenwich Peninsula and the Dome, um, and that is the Blackpool Tunnel. Um, so there's already, there were two lanes here, then there were four, and he's now proposing four more lanes, just coming up the same bit and then cutting across here, and then sort of filtering into here. Um, and as you can imagine, air pollution is already far exceeding at both ends here on NO2, um, as it is in the wider area, including where that Thames Gateway Bridge is just a bit further down that way. So that is hardly <laughs> in any way what those local people and what those schools need. Um, and um, they, they, they've had an initial consultation, um, which uh, it was very dodgy, there was no information um, what they referred to things which were then not provided in terms of studies. Um, they're, not, they're, they're talking about consulting in the autumn, and I'm trying to think, how are they going to fiddle, you know, <laughs> massage, sorry, these figures for air pollution? How can they possibly um, work out that, they could, that, that this could be acceptable? Um, I, can't, I can't imagine, but um, last time that the Blackman Tunnel was doubled from two lanes to four lanes, traffic doubled itself in less than a year at peak time, more than doubled in less than a, in less than a year. So, you know, you know, you've got a new bit of road, but all the roads around basically have more traffic. Um, and, and congestion also expects, is expected to, to, to increase when you, you build new roads. So it is, it is completely accepted that new roads generate new traffic because um, basically if, if, if it's a little bit easier for a while, people who would have otherwise um, gone by public transport think, oh, maybe I'll drive now. Um, and, and that was completely accepted with the Thames Gateway Bridge, that new traffic was generated. Um, and, and the inspector also found that congestion was likely to increase as well. Um, and the Blackman Tunnel study showed that uh, very clearly. So um, I think that uh, the consultation will be very interesting and anybody wants to get involved because it will it'll affect a big area um, and, and, and you know, really very, very worrying. Um, so um, that's, that's a little bit about those river crossings. I mean, I'll just come back to to other big things that you mustn't do to make it worse. Now, for instance, also in East London, City Airport, which is here, um, that applied for 50% for more flights. And again, the application for that showed that a receptor there that wouldn't have gone over, the, wouldn't have been over the EU limit uh, without the 50% increase was set to go over with it. Now, they, we, we tried to judicial review um, on that, but we failed um, as Friends of the Earth uh, Rights and Justice Centre. Um, but um, basically, um, I don't know, it probably will take, take this receptor over, we don't know. Um, but, you know, how, how these things um, are seen as, as acceptable when there's such a downside um, and the reality of the jobs is, is so marginal, as has been working with the, the group um, uh, it used to be called Fight the Flights, now Haycan East, which is linked to the Haycan group in Heathrow. So, um, you know, really, really worrying. Um, and so, touching on Heathrow, um, I think it was Anne or Ian who mentioned about Heathrow. Um, and if you look at a map for NO2, and there's a couple of um, copies at the back there, um, there is the Central London blog. I was Murad actually, you talked about it, sorry Murad. And you can see the Heathrow blob on the NO2 map of London. You know, it is a blot on the, it is a blot on, on the landscape, literally. 
Um, so the idea of having a third runway, you know, unbelievable. Or, you know, any other um, expansion such as, you know, the, the, the end of runway alternation um, and allowing mixed mode, which is primarily a noise concern because it would mean planes landing and taking off on both runways simultaneously, which means that people don't get the noise respite that they do now. But um, also, you know, any increase is, a, is a, an NO2 uh, particularly issue. Um, Ground-based aviation, you know, on CO2 as well, on carbon dioxide and climate change has, a, has a, you know, quite a considerable effect. Um, so those are things that, that, you know, we've really got to, you know, think about making sure we don't do. Um, and, and I think a key way to tackle, you know, we've got to do some of this dry stuff, such as working with Boris on his on his um, strategic plan. There's another sort of set of um, uh, adjustments he's going to make to that. Um, Muir had mentioned the 2020 vision. Um, there's a, the requirement under the Localism Act to put all his environmental strategies together. So there's, you know, chances to sort of, you know, ha have all these things up for grabs. Um, but, um, you know, from Boris's past, um, past uh, track record, it's very worried because the, London, the last London plan revisions, he actually changed the criteria for road building in London to make it easier to build roads. So we had managed to fight off that Thames Gateway Bridge using a, using a, a policy in the London plan. Um, and and the expect, in, in, that was the key thing the inspector said. It, it failed the, the, the plan because it didn't, you know, they couldn't show the regeneration benefits, but the, the problems were really clear. So the, the criteria now weakened, as well as introducing his plans for that Silvertown Blackwall thing. Um, he also did other bad things in the, in, in the London plan, parking standards, um, various things, also problems such as um, there was a commitment, um, you know, the, the, the Western Extension, which in reality we think that he didn't really want to totally scrap, but he committed himself to abide by what people said. So he scrapped that, delaying the low emission zone. And then some of this stuff that he's been doing um, to try and tackle the, the sort of the, the fact that we're quite close, but not quite close enough for safety on the PM10 limit. Um, uh, Simon's done so much work about the, like the supposed dust suppressors, or not dust because they're, what do you call it, pollution suppressors. <laughs> um, and as Ian was saying, it's not glue, it's just some sort of stuff that, sort of, you know, um, doesn't even stick it, and it certainly doesn't stick it permanently. Um, so it is, it, it is a, you know, Simon calls it a, a, an absolute fraud because it's sort of being done particularly where the, where the um, suppressors, uh, where the monitors are. So, you know, there are, there are really worrying things, um, and, and, and it comes down to just being not, not prepared to take bold action to cut the baseline to actually cut traffic levels. Um, and that is, you know, that is something we've got to get um, a really clear, um, you know, pulling together many people in London to try and really, really get that sort of strong, bold level of, of action because, you know, if we've got to cut traffic levels by, you know, 20-30%, uh, we're not going to, we're not going to, to, to do to do anything unless we, you know, do, do more than tinker around the edges. But luckily, you know, with Boris, we've got a, a strong sort of alliance in the Assembly with, you know, Murad for Labour really picking up on this air, air pollution issue and working, doing fantastic work. And the Lib Dems have also made it, you know, a real key issue. And of course, the Greens have been absolutely brilliant on it. Um, so there is a, you know, there is a, a real sort of pulling together there, but we need to work at all levels. You know, we need to work at individual level, at borough level, um, Assembly level, UK level, international level, um, but um, it's it's got a momentum. So I think um, I think it's just great that everybody's here, and we've got to try and get this network networked out to other people um, and to as many different different um, contacts that we can. But um, I think there's you know big big strides to be made and big publicity. You know people, it's it, you know that's one of the reasons it's easy to work on. It is it is a much more relevant issue to people than climate. But um, you know, and that was you know a, a big part of that was cutting traffic. But you know this 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 is this is, is a clearer way 
that you know it's it absolutely crucial for its own right for tackling um, the health and the and, and those issues, and it has a, a, an added benefit of also tackling climate because you're tackling traffic as well. So anyway, thank you.